So today I'm going to be telling you about the death of George Washington because it's a very interesting story and it kind of speaks a lot to a couple of things. One, the man himself and some of his mentalities, some of the way he held himself, the way he presented himself, but also to the medicine of the time, which is important to understand because this was George Washington. He had the best medical whatever available to him that was even possible at the time. So, on Thursday, December 12th, 1799, George Washington was out on horseback uh, supervising the farm activities uh, from about late morning to roughly three in the afternoon. Now, the weather had shifted, had gone from a light snow uh, to hail and then to rain. So, when we returned, he was wet. He was soaking wet. Uh, his horse was wet. His clothes were wet. And somebody said, hey, uh, General, or Mr. President, I'm actually not sure exactly how, how, who addressed him as what, because some people still called him General. Perhaps you should get out of those wet clothes before you go to dinner. However, he was a big fan of punctuality, and he would not want to be late on any occasion whatsoever. So, uh, he decided to remain in his wet clothes uh, for dinner. So, I'm not sure about you, but if somebody uh, was having me over for dinner and they smelled like wet horse, I would probably insist that they changed clothes before dinner uh, just to make sure he, we were all more comfortable. Now, the next morning brought three inches of snow and a sore throat. Now, throughout the day, his voice became increasingly hoarse. And Friday evening, as typical for most evenings, uh, Washington read from the newspapers with his secretary uh, and his wife. Between 2 and 3 in the morning, Washington awakes in pain. His wife, Martha, is concerned about the state of uh, affairs and uh, wants to send for help. Now, when Caroline, the house slaves, comes in to uh, light the fire at daybreak, Martha sends for Tobias Lear, who is a secretary, uh, and he rushes into the room. And finds Washington in bed having difficulty breathing. So then Lear sends for the overseer at Mount Vernon, who then... Uh, at the request of Washington, bleeds him. Lear had also sent for uh, Dr. James Craik, who was the family doctor and uh, Washington's trusted friend and physician for roughly 40 years. Washington is given a mixture of molasses in the meantime, butter and vinegar. Mo molasses, butter, and vinegar in order to soothe his throat. However, he's got a throat infection and it's difficult for him to swallow, so he nearly actually chokes to death on that himself. As the morning progresses, Washington doesn't feel any better, and Martha requests that uh, Tobias Lear uh, send for another doctor. In the meantime, Dr. Craig finally arrives at 9 in the morning in order to examine Washington and produces a blister on his throat in an attempt to balance the fluids in Washington's body, known as humoralism. This was the predominant medical practice at the time was balancing the four fluids of the bile uh, of the body you have black bile yellow bile uh plus pus and vomiting oh, i'm sorry pus and um blood yes so you would either be bled be given a uh, diuretic be given a uh, nausea uh, inducing type of thing or uh, a blister would be produced in order to produce some sort of uh, pus type of thing. Uh, so then Washington, or I'm sorry, Craig, then decides to bleed Washington again and orders for a potion of vinegar and sage tea uh, be prepared for gargling. Then Craig sends for a third physician, which basically tells you that things are going horribly wrong. Uh, it's a definite sign that uh, the ailment's quite serious at that point. By noon, an enema is administered, but it doesn't work. Uh, then he's bled for the fourth and final time. It's a total of 32 ounces out of a total of 160 ounces of blood uh, that is in you uh, was extracted during the last bleeding. So actually, it's not 160 ounces that's in you. I apologize. Um, but yeah, a, t a total of 160 ounces was drained from him. Uh, and that last bleeding was 32 ounces, so it's quite a lot. And then vomiting is induced because nothing's going to make that anything better, so might as well induce vomiting, right? And at 4.30 in the afternoon, George calls to Martha at his bedside and asks that he bring his two wills from his study. So he has two different wills. He doesn't know exactly what he's going to do, uh, but he had it down to at least two because he was preparing for his death. He's old and he's rich, so he can definitely do that. Uh, he discards one and has it 
burned. Martha burns it, so there's no uh, telling what was actually going to be in that. Then he calls for Tobias Lear again, and he tells Lear, he says, I find I am going, my breath cannot last long. I believe from the first that the disorder would prove fatal. So he thought at first that, yes, he's going, to, he's going to die from this. And now at this point, he has decided, yes, I am going to die. So at five in the afternoon, he gets up from his bed and he makes sure that he is dressed. He doesn't want to be dying in his bedclothes or anything like that. He wants to make sure that he is dressed when he dies. And he walks over to his chair. So this picture right here is actually not really that accurate. Uh, he walks over to his chair. Uh, so he knows he's dying and he gets, dre uh, gets dressed. Then he returns to his bed within 30 minutes, but he's dressed. He makes sure that he's ready for the occasion. And at 8 at night, more blisters are produced, this time on his feet and his legs. And then between 10 and 11 at night, on December 14, 1799, George Washington dies. According to his wishes, he's not buried for three days. And during that time, his body lay in a mahogany casket in the new room. Uh, and on December 18th, a solemn funeral was held at Mount Vernon. So a lot of this really speaks to the nature of Washington, a very big man to stand on ceremony. Uh, I've mentioned in a couple of classes before that this is a guy that, while president, would give you one minute of presidential presence during a state dinner, which means he would stand next to you. Not engage in conversation, but just stand next to you, give you this presidential presence, and you're supposed to feel honored by it. I would feel incredibly awkward uh, with this six foot three, I believe, man standing over me uh, while I'm trying to eat dinner and carry on a conversation with other people uh, at a very formal event. But it was supposed to be an honor, so I suppose I would feel uh, honored at the time. But again, too, uh, I ask you, think about it for a second. If you sit there and realize, yes, I am going to die, what's the first thing that you would do? I can guarantee most people would probably not say, uh, okay, well, I'm going to make sure that I am dressed for the occasion, uh, but maybe spend some time crying, you know, talking to family, doing something like that. Uh, getting dressed and make sure that you're dressed your, your best would not be uh, what most people would do from the beginning.